Hello, welcome again to another uh, Simple Truth Midweek Bible Study. It is May the 26th, 2021. And, uh, I don't know, seems like it's been quite a week since the last time we were here like this. I got to go to church for the first time since uh, Father's Day of last year. I uh, had one of those moments where I kind of just realized, wait, I can do youth group outside. I don't need to uh, be inside with all the uh, potential risk of COVID. So um, that's going to be the plan from now on. If you are uh, part of Simple Truth and uh, you have teenagers or you know teenagers or you are a teenager, we're going to be doing youth group from now on uh, outside. Which is, um, you know, I mean, nine times out of ten, we would just be outside on Sunday mornings anyway because we tend to like the weather outside better than going inside of a uh, classroom meant for uh, fourth graders. So, uh, yeah, that was really nice. Um, I really enjoyed seeing everybody again. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen a lot of those faces and... Uh, appreciated uh, a lot of folks s told me that they had been tuning in on Wednesday nights more people than I realized more people than I thought were um, joining on Wednesday nights so that was encouraging and uh, yeah just appreciated getting to see everybody and be back to uh, approaching normal finally so uh, yeah let's continue on in the book of James. I'm going to pray and we're going to get started. Lord, I thank you for um, the opportunities that we have to uh, study your word, to draw closer to you and uh, learn something about ourselves, learn something about you, and ask that you would help us to uh, take your word, apply it to our lives, and um, grow and, and be closer to you and represent you better to the world around us. Lord, I want to lift up Nathan Foster asked that you would keep your hand on him and in the surgeons who were going to be um, helping him. Lord, I pray that you would give peace and joy and uh, encouragement to Dan and Rachel and that all things that happen there, you'd be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, last Wednesday, we finished up James chapter 1 with, uh, you know, talking about the source of temptations and got a little bit uh, into the deep end of theology with talking about the nature of God. And also we talked about being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And it uh, it's kind of funny, it, when I was talking about temptations, uh, I likened it to being advertised to. And uh, I mentioned that I like backpacks. I own a lot of backpacks and it, I mean, I'm not really fanatical or anything else like that, but it was more of an illustration. You know, I, I probably do have too many backpacks, but, um, since then I've been getting ads for, uh, a website called backpack world. And <laughs> it's funny targeted advertising. They, they caught me. Don't buy me backpacks people. Um, anyway, um, today we're going to break into James chapter 2. Uh, we're going to read the first verse of chapter 2 right now, and then we'll, we'll really get into it. So it says, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. So he opens up this section with a premise, and it's don't show partiality. And he's going to spend the next 12 ver or so verses uh, supporting that premise. But before we do that, I want to get into a little bit of background so we have a, a you know universal understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about partiality partiality is uh it's favoritism uh, when you treat one group of people differently than you treat another group of people based on uh, superficial reasons and to, to me like the easiest way to uh, picture that is with racism right uh that's partiality, where you treat one group of people differently for something that's completely superficial. It has nothing to do with um, 
who they are or their character or what kind of things that they do. But uh, some people judge other groups of people that way and they show partiality to groups of one color and they show disrespect or um, the opposite of favoritism towards another group based on their skin color. So if you read through the Bible everywhere, all the way through, partiality is condemned. Um, in the Old Testament, God uh, condemned partiality against the poor and uh, against foreigners. You can read about that in Deuteronomy. I believe it's um, it's actually chapter 1, I think, uh, where he talks about, the, um, you know, appoint judges who are going to judge with justice and not to uh, ignore the complaints of the poor or tolerate injustice against uh, someone who's just because they're not Jewish. But um, partiality and the law against partiality carries over to in, into really any kind of interaction that we can have with other human beings. Ephesians chapter 6 uh, talks about the relationship that masters should have with their servants. And he tells masters to treat your servants with respect, not as someone who is beneath you socially or someone who doesn't uh, deserve the same sort of respect that a fellow human being does because God in heaven is going to judge all of us with impartiality and he's not going to be impressed that you were a, a manager or that you own your own business and he's not going to excuse you treating other people poorly just because you had some tiny bit of authority in your life. So partiality is something that we should avoid in, in all circumstances. But James brings out a specific circumstance that we're going to read about. But he states it in a really interesting way because he, he says, show no partiality as you hold the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Being impartial is actually something that is central to our faith because it's the basis, one of the basis is of our own salvation. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34 and 35 says this. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So anybody can come to God for salvation. You don't have to be, you know, born into a certain family. You don't have to uh, have any kind of special background. Anybody can come to God. And everybody must come to God for salvation. Nobody gets a free pass, and nobody ex is excluded unless they exclude themselves. So we have received that impartiality impartiality from God, and he requires that to, us to give it to everyone else around us also. So with, that's our little background. Here we go. This is James' example of partiality in James chapter 2, verse 2. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say you sit here in a good place well you say to the poor man you stand over here or sit down at my feet sit, sit down at my feet have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts so i i thought it was it's interesting that his example here is so relatable that Anybody can picture this happening even 2,000 years after he wrote this example. Here's his hypothetical situation, right? A, a well-dressed man comes into church, and he is obviously successful. He's rich, and, um, you know, it's, it's good and it's right that this man should be welcomed into church and that we should make every uh, effort to make him feel comfortable there. The problem is when an obviously poor man also comes in and he's he's treated differently uh, the rich man was given a good seat in a good spot and the poor man is told hey why don't you go stand in the corner over there or why don't you sit down on the floor and it's it's outrageous to think about this it almost sounds like like hyperbole like this could never really happen you know you can picture it in your mind um as a sort of a caricature but not something that could really actually take place except that I uh, as a church janitor at a different church have been asked to 
basically get rid of homeless people who were hanging around the front of the church building on a Sunday morning. And it was said that was because it was bad for so-called bottom feeders to be in front of the church asking for help. And uh, it actually, Jeff and I helped, took care of that homeless guy and um, started calling ourselves bottom feeders from now on. So this is something that actually happens. Um, I had friends that, that left the church in part because they seated people according to how much they tithed. That, was, that would determine where you got to sit in church was how much your tithe check was. Um, so it happens. And, and I think much more often than those examples that I just gave, it happens on a much smaller scale. Maybe you kind of avoid talking to somebody who looks shabby, whereas normally you enjoy chatting with people, especially people who maybe look more like you. Um, or maybe you avoid shopping in a certain town because there's more immigrants there and they uh, maybe intimidate you or the, you feel that you just don't want to go there. And, okay, I admit that I kind of do this. Uh, but I do it, I, I guess, in reverse because I avoid shopping in, in Roseville if I possibly can. Specifically the malls. I can't stand places like the fountains because it, I'm not comfortable with the sort of people who are comfortable at the fountains, if that makes sense. And that's partiality. And I need to repent of that. I, I still won't shop at the fountains because they don't have anything that I would ever want. But um, I need to get my heart right about showing partiality against people there. So when we do this sort of thing, what happens is that we are judging others based on their outward appearance. I said before, superficial reasons, right? One person looks respectable, and so you respect them. Another person looks, you know disrespectfully what's the word for that uh disreputable sure uh and so we we don't bother to show them respect or we treat them with less respect that we showed other people and we reveal ourselves really that we are judging with evil thoughts and this partiality as we said before goes against one of the central pillars of our faith and that, that God shows no partiality, but all are equal in his sight. So um, before we go on, I want to make sure that we acknowledge that the problem that James is addressing here is not that some people are rich. Uh, the rich man is not the sinner in this story, right? But it's the person who is treating the rich man with partiality because of his appearance. Uh, the sin of greed is not having money. The sin of greed is the desire for more. And so no matter what you have, you can sin by fixating on having more, getting more. That's, that's greed. Not just having money, but fixating on gaining more money. That's important to remember as you read through uh, a little bit more. He says, verse 5, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you, the ones who drag you into court? Are, not, are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you are called? When I read these things uh, about um, rich people making trouble for the rest of us, it makes me think of guys like Jeffrey Epstein. You know, the things that that guy did were only possible because he just had ridiculous amounts of money. And, you know, even beyond that, the people who had him killed in jail were able to do that because they had ridiculous amounts of money. And, um, you know, it's not the money itself that is evil or having money that makes you evil, but money gives evil a greater reach, if that makes sense. And the same with, with good. If you have a lot of money you can feed more poor people i guess you know it's it gives you more reach either way um but we have we have this sort of 
hero worship of rich and powerful people in in society. You know, celebrities are given a voice and uh, or a platform or whatever because a lot of people know who they are. You know, they make music and so then they're going to tell everybody else how they should live their lives. I mean, you open up Facebook and they start showing you pictures of all the celebrities who are getting their their COVID-19 shots. And uh, I mean, who cares? Get your shot or don't get your shot because you read up on it and because you thought through the benefits and drawbacks of both sides. If you get a COVID-19 shot because you saw Mariah Carey getting a COVID-19 shot on Facebook, then you're an idiot. I mean, I I got my shot and I think that everybody probably should, but if you get your shot because I said so, why would you do that? Listen to the doctors, listen to people who, you know, study these things. I'm, I study the Bible and there's nothing about COVID-19 in there. Sorry. Uh, I'm not an expert. I listen to the guys who are. So I don't know why, why I went down that path, but, um, the world puts celebrities, puts the rich and powerful on this pedestal and they, they won't ever stop, right? This is the way that the world works. It's oriented that way. The, the rich people matter, the, the powerful are allowed to have an opinion. And if you're not in your, in that club, then you don't get a, an opinion. You don't matter. And the world is never going to change. We're not going to fix that in the world, but we can't allow, we, we should not allow, we must not allow the church to work like that in the book of first uh, Corinthians chapter one. Starting in verse 26, Paul says, For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who came to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, that the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. So there's no condemnation for simply being rich, and there's no special privileges just because you're poor. God shows no partiality. That's the central point that we've been talking about. But, you know, sometimes being rich makes you feel more self-sufficient. And, you know, Jesus said it's, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's, it's because of that reason. Maybe you don't feel like you need help because you can help yourself. Jesus also said, blessed are the poor in spirit, because the poverty of spirit makes you recognize that you need help, that you need God. So it's foolish to show partiality to the rich. And it really only betrays our own greed. The reason that you would treat someone with greater honor because they have more money is because you think you're going to gain something from them. Verse 8, James chapter 2. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So the cure for partiality, excuse me, the cure for partiality is to love our neighbors, love our neighbors as ourselves. And that includes respecting those who are poor. I had a ladybug just drop out of the sky onto me. Um, and that also includes not treating rich people like they're a walking ATM machine. Instead, it says that we should show our neighbors, all of our neighbors, the same love that we would want to be shown to us, right? You wouldn't want to be shuffled off into a corner because you showed up in your work clothes and you wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want to have people sucking up to you because they thought that you were going to put more money into the offering bowl because of, you know, they, 
I don't know, kissed your feet or something. So James calls loving your neighbor as yourself the, the royal law. And this is not only because it comes from the king, all of the law of the Old Testament and the Bible is from the king, but this is because loving your neighbor as yourself is king over all the rest of the laws. Jesus said this is the greatest commandment. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, look over at uh, Leviticus chapter 19. This is, you know, Leviticus is the heart of the law. And um, this is where we find first in the Bible where it says you should love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going to read a good ways back uh, just so we get some context of what it means, what it looks like to love your neighbor as yourself. So this is uh, Leviticus chapter 19. Starting in verse 9. <clears throat> when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleans after your har harvest. And sh you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired worker shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So, loving your neighbor is a lot more than just don't do anything to them that you wouldn't want them to do to you. You know, there's there's laws in there about, hey, don't, don't trip blind people and don't uh, yell curses at a deaf man. But we're also commanded, well, they were at least also commanded to consider the poor or the traveler as they were harvesting and to leave some of the harvest in the field or if anything fell as they were picking it, just to leave it for somebody else to come along and they would have something they could find and they would be able to eat. So... That's loving your neighbor, actually thinking of good to do for them and actively looking for good. So treating other people that you want to be treated, not just the negative, but the positive. And love is the cure for partiality. James says that if we live this way, then we fulfill the whole law. That's why it's the royal law, right? And the opposite is also true. If you show partiality instead of love, then you're breaking the whole law. You know, oftentimes we criticize the unbeliever for, uh, you know, making statements like, well, I'm a good person. Um, because, you know, they think that just because they don't do any of, like, the big sins that uh, God's not going to judge them. But, you know, we do the same thing as believers. You know, maybe we don't commit the big sin of murder, but we commit the small sin of disrespecting the poor. And a transgression is a transgression, as, as James says in uh, chapter 2. If you've broken a law, then you have broken the law. And there's no such thing as little sins. There's just sin. And of course, that puts all of us in the same boat. We're all sinners. And I think that that's why James makes this point. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're not better off than the poor, and we're, at, we're no worse than the rich. We're all in need of God's mercy. And so we should all live as those who are judged by the law of liberty. And we talked about the law of liberty last week when we were in uh, James chapter 1. 1 verse 25 says, But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. And, you know, the point that we made is that it is a law of liberty. We're free to choose what we're going to do. 
you know, you can decide if you want to follow God or if you don't want to follow God. You're free to make that choice. But we will be held accountable to for our actions. It's not enough just to hear the law. It's not enough just to know the law, but you have to be a doer. And we're going to talk about that in much more detail next week as we finish off the book of James. Chapter 2, at least, not the whole book. Um, but for tonight, I want to finish this section with a quote from the book of Galatians, if I can find it, after Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, before Ephesians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 13. For you were called to freedom, brothers, it's the law of liberty, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh but through love serve one another, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. So, there we go. James chapter 2, 1 through 13. Thanks for joining me. Uh, let's pray. I almost forgot, but let's pray. Lord, again, I just want to thank you for your word. Thank you for the things that you have to teach us. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to examine our hearts and see um, where we have fallen short, see the things that we have, uh, where we have sinned against our brothers and sisters, the people around us, the way that we have uh, judged them based on how they look or uh, where they're from or anything else like that. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be like you, that we would judge not with uh, imperfect eyes, but that we would look at the heart the way that you do and that uh, through that we would show the love of uh, Jesus to the people around us in Jesus name we pray amen all right guys well I think that that is possibly the first time that I've finished before a half an hour at least in a long time so yay for me I hope you guys have a great week I will uh, see some of you tomorrow I'm sure and uh, some of you on Sunday, and otherwise I'll see you here next week. God bless you.